Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to episode 44 in my second Let's Play series for Anno 1800. In the last episode, we did a big redesign of the Investor Plateau and the hotel surrounding the Iron Schlong Monument. We then also built about 40 new investor residences and worked to secure some new recipes for our restaurants, cafes, and bars. Today, however, I'm mostly hoping to focus on some of the quest chains that I've left by the sidelines and continuously raise our population, of course. Now, in between episodes, I've been working on that population increase by adding in 40 new in engineer households to kind of replace the 40 that we upgraded into investors. So basically just upgraded workers into artisans, upgraded them into um, engineers, and then dragged them all over into this location here, which of course is entirely temporary. That is why it's so heinous looking to look at. But that has led to a global population milestone for me of 71,300 and counting, as it current, currently stands, and we're about two and a half thousand or something like that away from what we need to complete our palace, which just needs one more module here, and I'll probably add in another one and kind of dress the back entrance of this area by moving some of the hotels and changing things around a bit. So, the entire engineer slash investor district that's on the right side of this river here is subject to complete complete change and annihilation, I was going to say. But yeah, it's, it's subject to change, heavy change, right? That's all going to be redesigned. Now, this port, I'm really happy with at the moment. I think the palace is great. I like the layouts of the gardens and the, the museum inside and all of that stuff. Uh, obviously, inside the garden, that has work to be done. I haven't forgotten that. But we'll get to that eventually. Um, and the scholars as well, right? That's all great. I'm, I'm super big fan of that area beyond the... Uh, Beyond the palace walls, as you could say, the palace limits. I'm a huge fan of the plateau. I think it look, it's looking great. People um, really responded well to the lookout points that we can see down here. Saying that looks and feels much more like a natural kind of park and stuff, which is awesome. Uh, I love it as well. I think it looks really cool. I'm trying to think what else is going to change. Largely speaking, the worker districts out here aren't going to change. Something that needs to be done is the Docklands is split across this kind of pier here. And I love the pier. I mean, I worked really hard on making this look good. It was not easy. It took many an hour to get this right. And I dare say it's some of the best pier in Anno 1800. <laughs> but it's not done, right? I think what I might end up doing is actually moving the Grand Trading Post around to here. Because this place has just one supply warehouse. And obviously a trading post acts as a supply warehouse. So... We could slot this in here, just move some of the oil storage or whatever. I don't even really need it. It's just there for aesthetics, really. And have it right there in the center and act as the kind of central hub for the sort of industrial docks that we have fire here. Broke out. A fire broke out. Oh, we'll get to that. Um, so that way, I could actually just build a second kind of docklands out on this side. Still kind of keep the pier in the center, but have this second kind of section for different piers and things. So that's kind of what I'm thinking of doing. I really would not like to change that or move it. I have thought about how that would look or what I could do, like if the Docklands came straight out, you could have a pier that actually goes like parallel to it down and parallel to the wall. So this this kind of coastline area, it's got a little work to do, so I haven't forgotten about that. Um, the zoo here I think is great, this one not so much, this has to just be kind of moved around and toned up a bit once we get some uh, some of the last items that I'm looking for. The Artisan Cliffs, the famous Artisan Cliffs. Um, Looking great, <laughs> but people said you should add in some lookout points. I agree. So I'll definitely look to do that and probably add a restaurant in here that they don't, they don't have one, which seems weird. So probably end up doing that. So there's a lot of tiny little reworks, but a lot of the layout, I guess you could say, is really almost done. It's just this is the main layout section that needs to change. But other than that, layouts are pretty much set. Looks like I've gotten that bug again where this is highlighted and I can't unhighlight it. Yeah, but well, what can you do? Anyways, um, so in between episodes, not only did I build those 40 engineer households, I also finished the Arctic Expedition. It just came back not moments after the episode ended, and that gave us the recipe for Glog. And sorry that I don't know how to pronounce it. It's G-L-O with a slash through the O, although it doesn't have it there, but it does have it in the recipe book, as you can see. Uh, so that's probably why I didn't realize. I was just calling it Glog, because I thought it was an, a regular O. Um, but yeah, I don't know how to say it. <laughs> but either way, it's given us a negative 20 to beer, negative 10% to coffee, and negative 10 to uh, champagne consumption. So it's perfect for the investors because of that. Um, not necessarily for the beer, but for the coffee and the champagne. So it's a really good one. You can only get this one if you have the Passage DLC. 
So you have to get, uh, obviously, whale oil from the Arctic, and you need that DLC to have that recipe. Uh, but that's working now. So I thought basically what we could do is look into the the new Embasin quest, as well as the quest that we have for the tourists that appear. The last thing I wanted to mention is over on the island of Lusk, our kind of central production hub, um, I've added two new penny farthing buildings. One of them is actually paused. Didn't really need to add two, so... It's a long story, but basically, we should have enough now globally for penny farthings. That was the only thing that adding those extra investors and engineers by adding them, that was the only thing I think that actually suffered. Now, maybe I'm wrong. We'll see throughout this episode if our population starts falling down and if I need to set up new trade lines or trade routes or something like that. We'll see what happens. Um, I also noticed that this completely filled up sewing machines. And when that fills up, there's an interesting problem. Bear with me, if you will. It's an interesting problem that occurs when you do start to lay out factories like this, that if you start producing too much and you're not selling it, dumping it, or whatever, using it, then the, obviously the factories will stop running. And normally that's like fine, whatever. But when you're relying on items to generate you extra goods, such as pocket watches and gramophones that we're getting here, once every eight cycles, if your factories stop working, Four factories suddenly go offline. Suddenly we're making so much less pocket watches and gramophones, you know? Because th there's less cycles in all these different factories. They pa they pause production. And you can see that we've run out of couch. That should, that should get fixed next time I get Docklands. Yeah, in three minutes that we'll get the proper bulk order for that. And that shouldn't ever pause again. Um, An explosion in one of your factories. have to check on that. But yeah, I just thought it was worth mentioning. Because I noticed that this was full and the they had all stopped. And that packed. tanked my pocket watch and gramophone production. Now we do get them from other things as well. We have this guy here who gives us pocket watches, but it was just an interesting thing. I was like, oh yeah, we're overproducing and we're not selling it. We're not sending it off in Docklands. So what I ended up doing was I created a trade route from here to Cape Trelawney. Because in Cape Trelawney, they were actually in need of um, sewing machines. God, it went very quiet. <laughs> But yeah, they were actually in need of it. So now they're getting it supplied from out there. So hopefully, you know, that all balances out, works out all right. Uh, this is something else we need to do, is we need to actually build the World's Fair out here to progress the quest. So it's all about quests this episode. So just really quickly, I'm going to look at where those explosions happened. It was out here in Marbella. Luckily, we've been delivering everything they need. These are always a bit of a pain to rebuild because you need concrete, reinforced concrete, and you often forget to send that kind of thing out here. Um, but if you set up a little construction ship, it's no problem. Uh, no other, no other ruins anywhere else, so that's good. Let's get back to the morning. All right, so to Cape Trelawney, let's have a look at that one first. So we have the quest for the Great Exhibition. Your city at Crown Falls is almost unparalleled. The one thing that could elevate it even further would be to hold the greatest World's Fair ever seen. And our reward is Fernando de Faro, coffee lover and all-round Chad. <laughs> I'll run CAD. Anyway, joined after you helped with the uh, the Queen of Cape Trelawney, Fernando used Fernando used used to make Vasco's morning coffee, but King Zhao put paid to that. Sorry that I read that so badly. I'm heavily sleep deprived. Just FYI. <laughs> um, but anyway, Susanna Brightwoman, a glimmer in the darkness, joined after you helped the Queen of Trelawney, formerly of the Royal Mint. The Queen sent Susanna to make you your gold go further. So her, she provides extra goods gold f for clockmakers and jewelers. Oh, interesting. That's interesting, because clockmakers and jewelers obviously consume gold, but she throws some back at you. Interesting. I'm just trying to work that out in my head, how that's going to work in Lusk. We'll get to that, though. And this guy provides the needs of coffee. Hell yeah. Just affects residences. Doesn't matter who they are. Affects them all. Investors and engineers. And provides them with coffee. That's pretty good. We'll definitely be throwing him in. Uh, in swords or something like that. Because we're. That's interesting. Because now as well with the restaurants. That like. Tone down the consumption of coffee. That's why he's just going to level it out completely. So that's going to change what kind of recipe you'd want in a restaurant. If he's there. Anyways. Uh, so right. So to do that. We just needed steel to start building. And I think we sent a ship here. It should be here by now right. Hi. There it is. Here's one I made earlier. Boom. I have one last vision. A world's fair sitting atop this magnificent metropolis. I just realized it needs electricity, doesn't it? I know this is so lame to just have this Finally, here. Finally, we have possession of that curiosity. 
I'll probably just move it, you know, eventually. I don't know where I'm going to put it, though. And I was thinking about hotels out here and what's going to happen out here. I don't know, man. It's too much to think about right now. Because I, I, we've run out of space on the little islands that I have, that I, I adore. But we kind of have run out of space. So I was like, do we build up here looking down? Could look kind of cool, you know? Um, people were saying before to build back up at the lake. I do like the idea of that as well. That could be quite cool. Surrounded by the, the actual falls of Crown Falls. Even that we've renamed it Crown Farms. So that could be quite cool. Have some type of houses up here. I'm just trying to think like... I mean, hotels up there... I don't know if it makes sense. If we're talk talking thematically when people come in off the boat... They're going to stay up by the waterfalls? I mean, maybe. Maybe. You'd think they stay down in the city though, but okay. A competitor's island. What's going on here? People did mention attack. something up with this. Out of goods, but it has goods. Then what's your problem? Missing fur. Oh, fur, fur is on the island. It's just not delivered here yet. Is it the same with all of these? Does that mean I'm just low on... Um, warehouse space or something. Also, people did also mention that... Um, yeah, the power didn't reach the full way. Very good observation. I did not notice that. Uh, so power is here. Extends to there and stops. So that one's powered. Yeah, this is all going to have to just be changed anyway. So just pop them wherever we can to get them working. And then move them later. Sorry for all the temporary measures, but these things can just be done in time lapses where we make things look nice. Otherwise, because me sitting here re like designing, that takes ages. So it's much better in a time lapse. So just getting the production chains right and then moving things for you, trust me, it's way better. But it does it does create a lot of temporary builds. Like, look at the state of that. <laughs> um, but soon, I don't, didn't want to go on about it, but I missed another episode. And again, it, I can't promise when I'll have episodes or not because my PC is just behaving so erratically. Obviously, I want to just sit down and bang out as many as I can. Um, but I, I don't like to do too many because I like to react to feedback. You know, I don't want to just queue up 10 episodes and then not be able to riff off of what you guys say. So I, I do one or two and then I, I want to check in on you guys. Um, but yeah, anyway, new PC is supposed to got delayed. It's basically been delayed three times and it should be here. Uh, I just want to continue building this actually. Sorry. Start the phase. We need 500 village farmers to work it. Are you kidding me? Why? I thought it would have been workers. Hmm. How many are on the island? 1,200. What could we maybe stop? Nice day for it. You got 3,000 potatoes. How about we? How about we chill on the potatoes for a bit? Uh, what about grain? Not. Excuse me. Not the mills, but grain itself. That's also fun. Yeah, let's just pause those. Let them do their thing. What else are they working? Schnapps distilleries? Oh yeah, there's a lot of that going on. Yeah, so we'll leave some of them running. Wake me up when you're ready. Start up again. I guess it would be a good idea, yeah, and then maybe turn on just a little bit of green. Just don't pause everything. Uh, by the way, I was pressing Shift F to pause all same type buildings. It's a nice little hotkey that actually you guys told me about. I didn't know about that one. So these buildings are full. So you can pause, you can pause, you can pause. Alright. Pretty good. Down to 17 now. 7. How many work in each one of these? 10 people. Alright, there we go. So now we're building this. No problem. It's going to take 30 minutes. Uh, but anyway, like I was saying, yeah, um, my PC's been delayed several times for different reasons. The first reason was it, every time it's just been a one-day delay, <laughs> but they don't ship over weekends, so it's caused it to be a full week. Um, but basically, basically the GPU they were trying to find, is it's an RTX 3090, so obviously these things are in heavy demand, and they did have them in stock or whatever, but the shipment that was supposed to arrive was just delayed a day. So it's like, okay, that's fine. Next next problem that comes up is a problem with fans, and I actually talked with them and ended up getting better fans that were actually cheaper, better in terms of RPM and in terms of cooling, but they didn't have any RGB attached to them, and I'm fine with that. I don't really want my PC to have RGB, and I'm, I'm not into that personally, uh, or I, do, I just don't care. It's, it's nice sometimes, but I, I don't really care. 
Um, so that actually ended up saving me money, which is good, and apparently will be more efficient. And then the next one was that they said, this is the worrying one, that I think it's worth pausing my gameplay for, is that they said that, oh, we put together your PC and it's just blue screening. Uh, so we have to like figure out what's going on. And I was like, right, great. I mean, it is good in a way that they caught that, right? Th that I didn't have that problem, but it's like, damn, even my new PC is having issues <laughs> and I haven't even got it yet. But okay. But yeah, so that, that was the last word on it. And they said like, oh, you know, hopefully then we can ship it by the weekend. But the weekend it is the weekend now. I'm recording this the day it comes out on a Sunday. So I'm hoping that tomorrow it should be here. It's past quality assurance now. So I, I assume that they've gotten past that section, but they haven't shipped it. So I'm assuming tomorrow or the day after. If it ships tomorrow, if it's just dispatched, it might take a full day to get to me. So it's on its way. <laughs> But my god, I mean, I'm just sitting here, it's fine. You know, if they originally just told me a date of in two days, that would have been fine. It's just with three delays, then it becomes like, you just have that constant like, oh yeah, it's about to arrive. Oh no, it's not. Oh yeah. Oh no. Oh yeah. No. <laughs> it's like, goddamn. Anyways, so we're progressing that quest. Let's jump over to, should we do the tourist? Yeah, let's continue with the tourist quest. And um, then we'll look to do Enbesa's quest as well. Same music just played, that's weird. All right, so for over here, we need to now build a uh, build the nightlife districts out here. And I think they wanted me to put the, well, let's see. It says a hotel. Build a light, nightlife district. They asked for a hotel and a variety theater. They're probably going to want restaurants and everything. It sucks though, man. I don't want to build it next to here, but oh well. So we have a hotel that we could move out. And that won't affect any building chains. So we'll just do that. So our population will decline just slightly doing this. The pier is such a long way away. The pier is a long way away. Are you kidding me? Man, I can't get any closer to the tar the the tourist thing. Does it want to be? Oh my god! No, that doesn't do it. Build a nightlife district near your tourist harbor with a hotel. I'm guessing that this needs to cover both. Does that work? Shit. Well, I'm obviously not deleting any of that stuff. I guess what I could do is just temporarily pull this out. <laughs> it doesn't feel right to do that. But it does progress the quest. Let's put that back where it was. Um, yeah, let's just attach this here. Okay. All right, so uh, now add a new bar. I mean, this is all just going to be deleted. It's, such, it's kind of pointless, so I'm sorry about that, but... Closed. Still working on the menu, Let's see, I what can we serve? We can serve... I mean, there's no houses around here. <laughs> so whatever's easiest, I guess. A daiquiri tropic. No sugarcane here. Uh, black muscovy. So coffee, schnapps, and rum. Yeah, go for it. Ah, you need a warehouse, of course. The worst nightlife district in the world, right there. Uh, right, well, should we just... I, I'm tempted to hop back over to Embaser or something while this, this is happening. Oh my god, we're actually closing up on 71,000. We're getting very close to it. Uh, without even all the extra engineer households that I plan on building. If we do reach about 71, that means we need about 3,400. And you get, what is it, 50 per household or 44? Curiosity. Potentially 44. Let's let's be generous to ourselves. Well, actually, let's not. Let's say 40. So that is 3, 400 divided by 40. 85 new households. Okay, so it would actually take up the whole thing, pretty much. Yeah. That is a lot. I was thinking that maybe we could get away with it without having to do that. But obviously, you could add in hotels. There's 500 in each one. It actually is more efficient. There's more people in a hotel than there is in a the same space if you take it up with just in engineers, for instance. Oh my god, we just exploded over 71,000. I don't even know what's changing. Every time I look at it, it stops. And we won't really get to see this until we look at, like, minutes. Oh well, it's good news. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see the population is climbing without me really doing anything. I thought everyone pretty much had everything already. Science, it, could just be, it could be in Cape Trelawney and things like that now that the fur is back up and running. So that, that could be it. Uh, build yourself a nightlife district. 
this latest brew so I have a bar thing. I and it's you. getting its stuff it's doing its thing and that still doesn't count hmm does it need to connect maybe Nope. Uh, I feel like I need to build this again. So. <laughs> You've certainly Here we go. Yourself. <laughs> the Marmalade Review will take the city by storm. Or rather, skirts. Is that it? Have we done all the tourist quests? That was the final thing. I think that was kind of supposed to be done a bit earlier, you know, just to tell you how to, like, get things set up. <laughs> and I left it quite late. Um, let me just see if there's any recipes that require quests. So, we've gotten all of those. The Marmalade Review must ah, there she is. Costumes worthy of its name. I was thinking lemons. Lots and lots of lemons sewn together. Provider with 15 tons of citrus? I think we have that. Easy. The lemons at last. Yeah. I think that should about cover it. We had a thousand well, tons. So to speak. It is a review after all. Cool. So that's another bar again. Sorry, just I'm just looking for the different back. recipes Get really quickly. So that's done as well. Oh, and then the last one is restaurants. Success. So the we're missing the the applause. Even fan mail. Here, read it. God, shut up. <laughs> We're missing the Strogoff goulash and the venison en croute. Dearest delicious Emma, words fail me. The elegance, the finesse, the audacity, the sheer femininity. To think that there could exist such explosively joyous art and we never knew. You have given great inspiration tonight to this humble artist and though I can never thank you enough, I pray you accept this tribute, a brand new audacious recipe Named after your revelatory creation, the oh, Lady I've Marmalade. Alongside the very best chefs, I've tried BRX Fist's breads, for example. Yours with undying ad admiration, Jay Cook, chef extraordinaire. So that's the, for those who don't remember, that's the guy that would have been on the cruise ship that su uh, supplied her food on her original way over, and then she's quite smitten by him. My dear of Cook was here. I told you the sea would toss him back to me. Here, hold on to this. It's the least I can do for your help. I mean, his name is Cook. And she says Cook. <laughs> she doesn't say Mr. Cook or anything like that. Makes me wonder. I know that Cook obviously refers to him being also a, a cook in a restaurant. But I feel like maybe it's just me. But I, you have to think that they knew the other meaning of that term. Even though the spelling is different. Especially with her, like, you know, romantic angle, let's say. Uh, so what happened? She said she was going to give me something. Did we get something? Maybe we got one of the recipes. Was it Stragonoff? No? Strogoff, sorry, Strogoff. Maybe it was one of the other ones that we I must have already had and didn't realize. I mean, I've had that one. These two are DLC, so it wasn't those. Yeah, so I'm not sure what we got. The banana surprise? Didn't she say it was to do with lemon? Sorry if I missed it, but yeah, I don't, I don't really know. Oh, maybe it was in the, um, ah, the, uh, Empire Tower. Just in the time Arch for the Pull up Lady Marmalade. There it is. Sorry, my bad. All right, got to it. So we've got them all, actually. God damn, that was quick. Lady Marmalade. A cabaret cocktail. This drink is a statement burlesque. It takes bottle, it takes bottle to order one of these. All oh, right, bottle in terms of, like, balls. <laughs> and it ain't for everyone. But for those who can own it, this Baudour, Baudour sip, jam-packed with color and fantabulousness, the is the night Chef incarnate. Is something of a culinary saint. So it reduces chocolate consumption 20%, it reduces coffee consumption 10%, and bread 10%. Bread's pretty easy to make. I don't know why there's so many that offer that. Um, the Brioche Royale. It's a great name. I almost wish there was one that didn't do coffee. Oh, no. I guess this is the global thing. So global, yeah, reduction of coffee is pretty good. I feel like this is the best one, but it's obviously the hardest with gas. Unless you just choose to use oil instead of gas and just supply gas for these res this restaurant. I could turn off gas in Cape Trelawney and then I could easily supply it here. 
It's very tempting. Because everything else is quite easy. And you get a 15% reduction to coffee, 15 to champagne, and 15 to chocolate. So it's big on the investors and the engineers, I guess. All right, man, we're getting through it. I just didn't think it would be so fast. Uh, so the last one then was just those those other two restaurants, uh, these things here. If people in the old world have access to more corn, there's a chance they might have a way to live up goulash. I don't know what that means. So I just deliver corn, maybe. Raw corn, see if, they, if that unlocks. And then this one was, perhaps if you built another airship, you could fly in some recipes from the Arctic. Oh man, I think we talked about that last episode. Sorry that my memory is so scattered. Oh yeah, we should look to do that. Sorry, I just forgot. I had a bunch of fur in that island that we didn't need anymore. Uh, so to build an airship, let's have a look over at the Arctic really quickly. And see what we've got and what we need. Yeah, gas and steam motors. Didn't I queue up a ship or something with all this? I'm so sure I did. I'm so sorry that I can't remember. And I have no idea. I mean, idle ships, there's no one that's holding that, so... Let me just check here really quickly. Is there a ship that would be holding any of that stuff? Doesn't look like it. So steam carriages... Which I might still have. Yep, we've got some. And then we'll just pick up the gas from this island itself. How about that? And we'll just fly up there. Alright, so that's on its way. Uh, the other one we could do is go grab some corn. So we'll send the ship off to the new world. Alright, sweet. Uh, right, that means now next up is Enbesa and see what we can do for quests out there. Oh, actually, just before we do that, I just want to move that hotel back and get rid of that um, stuff that we just built. Because it'll this hotel grows more if it's here. So just pop it back in and then we'll just say see you later to the rest of that stuff and put everything back where it should be. Like a glove. Alright, there we go. Alright, so that should stabilize that and come back to normal. Um, okay, so Invesa. Let's check out this new quest. So this is a new quest that was added for the Land Alliance DLC that, that just came with the update that accompanied the Tourist Season DLC. So it's called Epic of Lions. Look on my works, ye mighty. With Invesa resolutely turning to the future and a new brighter age, Emperor Katima worries that the memories of the epics of the kings of old will fade and will be forgotten. He wishes for you to assist him in ensuring these tales, those tales are preserved and honored properly. Hmm. Discuss the Emperor's wish to honor and base his history. All right, let's have a chat. Hallowed and hollow now is the ancient glory of Tabarine, but I will not see it clear heart. Sorry, I will not see its clear heart fail. The chronicles must be completed, the lost ages of Mbesa restored, the temple of Ilam will rise again as will the Mbesan National Museum, and your completed chronicles will be its crown jewel. I trust you will aid me in this. Uh, yeah sure, I'll compile the history of Mbesa for you. I trust you will see it done. I thought we partially erased its history, or at least the, the religious aspect. Uh, find the scholar on Caduce and Atoni. We have to find a scholar. This is an artist. The tattoo is only granted once a priest has proven mastery of the Ogdode. Find the scholar. So it's pinging me to here, but I don't think he's there. Okay, so we'll, we'll have a look. The wor the worrier. Is it you? Nope. Click to read a compound of native and basin fauna. Oh, maybe. Hang on. Let me read this. <clears throat> learning blindness is a gift the high priestess said so I could learn to listen better but I'm okay I should be praying at the fountain but I left my walking stick at the temple oh dear lord what was the first bit but I'm not entirely accustomed to it yet there are so many rocks in the way and oh I forgot my cane at the temple <laughs> she said that twice there's the scholar please let me be I'm quite busy studying great progress is just okay <laughs> Great progress is just waiting to be made on the Chronicles, if only you can access the library. Well, we've already done this, haven't we? We've read the Ogdode before. The Troglodyte Architecture. 
We've read all this before, unless it's... No, it's not different. This is what we've read. Yeah. Day in the life of a priest, and then the foundation of Embesa. And as they rode the waves, seeking the promised land, the queen bid the gods calm the raging storm. And so the gods did comply, and the waves rose higher than the mountains on either side of the ship, yet the waters before us were becalmed and clear, and ahead lay gold the golden plain of Ambesa. So the queen did lead her people through the sea, where Leviathans roam, and build a mighty city there. And in that city she raised a temple to her lost husband Selamawi, and those who had stayed with him in Seal Amidos beyond the confines of the world. Well, I'm a bit confused. Maybe I need to bring my ship up. Room might, over. might make sense. Oh yeah, it does say that. Move one of your ships to the request location. I'm sorry if you knew that. My bad. I didn't know. It doesn't always ask you to do that. Sometimes it asks you to click and read things. So. Uh, okay, so the ship is on the way. I have this um, Great Eastern here. There's a little debate in the chat whether or in the comments whether or not to use and build another Great Eastern or not. People did say you could just build one and get rid of it. He really didn't like it. But some were saying build a Great Eastern and have a Great Western. Other people were saying like, well, it's great because there is one. <laughs> but yeah, ultimately, I don't, I don't think I actually need one. So I'll, I'll leave it for a while. But maybe if we have some influence left over as we approach the end, um, maybe then. By the way, uh, I haven't reduced the episodes yet to two per week. It's just that I've been missing them because of my PC. Um, so it should be Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays as scheduled. And hopefully with a new PC, I actually plan on... I'm thinking I might jump into Frostpunk again, seeing as it became free on the Epic Game Store for a while, about a week ago. Um, I did a, my, One of my first Let's Plays on this channel was Frostpunk, and it was received so well. And um, people often ask me to go back and play the DLC, and I have played it once before, as I did with the original game, even before that Let's Play. Um, so, but it's far enough away from my memory now that I wouldn't so really remember exactly everything. So I think it could be quite a fun one to do in parallel with this series. It's also kind of a city builder, so it's, it, maybe you guys would have some interest in it also. Um, the scholar asks what news you bring him. All right, let's hop back over. Ugh, what a bore. The scholar is reticent to resume work. We've made progress here, but let us review what material we have before moving on. Okay. The Silver Age. Note, notes to Katima's steward. Embesa's Silver Age canoni canonically starts with the fall of King Surya and the rise to power of the Seven. It's usually seen to end with the sundering of the Seven. Questions that need answering. Which island was never governed by one of the Seven? Well, I would imagine, just really quickly, that would be the pirates, but I don't know if that counts as an island. Um, one of the islands at the time was described as leaderless. The remains of the Seven's Houses can be found on the islands near Tavarim, where they ruled. If you can find the remaining leaders' houses, we'll be able to deduct the leaders leaderless island. Look for the isolated and or prominent houses. <clears throat> well, it, ha it, it pretty much has to be... Well, anyway, we'll see in a sec. How large was Tavarim? By all accounts, the city flourished under the Seven's rule. Finding the ancient walls could help estimate the limits of the city at the time. It can't be much greater than the city today, so perhaps look near the city's current borders. Note, please report back the as soon as possible. Alright, cool. So let's do that one first. It seems a bit easier. Look for the original outer wall, maybe? Could this be something to do with it? Let's brighten the day up. I mean, they say this is a city. It doesn't look that big, but, um... Ancient wall. Here we go. The outermost limits of Tabarim under the rule of the Seven. The wealth produced under the Seven in the Silver Age seems to have been limitless. Well, not really, because it did stop here, didn't it? <laughs> An antique wall mark marking the limits of Tabarim under the Seven. Such a vast city must have seen this the age of prosperity and growth in the distant Silver Age. The Silver Age. That's such a cool name for it. Temple of Elam. Don't know if we finished it, did we? By looking at those two walls? Maybe. It did say that it went beyond the, even the city. Let me just read it again. Finding the ancient city walls could help estimate the limits of the city at the time. It can't be much greater than the city today. 
Well, we found two. I didn't see if it ticked them off here or not, but... I'm assuming that's it. Those are the two ancient walls, right? The question is, did it go further than that? Is there like buried walls or anything down here? That's what I was thinking. This doesn't even have a access to a warehouse, silly me. But it doesn't look like it, not to me anyway, unless there's like ruins that we can see near the river or anything. Nope. I think I think that's it. I think. Okay. So the next one then would be uh, find the ruins of the Seven Princes Palace on Kadusi, Wahadesha, or Angareb. It's got to be Angareb. It could be Kadusi, but I feel like it's got to be Angareb. Find the ruins of the Seven Princes Palaces on Kadusi, Wahadesha, or Angareb. Hmm. But thinking about it, when we looked around this place, there was really very little... I mean, if it's not in the city itself, there's really not that much... Oh, we found one. Words in an ancient indecipherable language are etched across the walls inside. Oh, that was lucky then. So it is this island. Well, I'm basically just going to have to hover over everything, really. Because that's no, that's no more out of the way than anything else, is it? Ceramic merchants, yeah, I remember that. And it's all on this island, right? Or it's 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 not split across two, potentially. It might be. Now, what about up here? This is where the pa the king, the king's like little cot and everything is in there. Yeah, actually, there it's still there, <laughs> the ancient crib. And apologies as well. I have um, randomly I had a nosebleed today. Like I haven't had one of those in years, and my nose is just all stuffed from it. So if I'm sniffing, uh, apologies for that, or if I sound any difference, because my nose is kind of blocked. Yeah, I don't know where this other house is, so I'll just I'll just hop over to um, Wahadasha and see. Could it be like that they're split across... Hey, that wasn't there before. Oh, that, that might, we might have to see that later, because that definitely was not there before. <laughs> I feel like I would definitely remember that. Um, yeah, let's see. That's Kiria's house. Oh, that was it. Uh, possibly the only house to survive unification, Wars of Kings Wog. Uh, the Great Wall. Find traces of Tabarine Silver Age fortifications. Walls found too. Oh, right. So you have to do them in order. Okay, well, we did just do that. So we can find that again pretty much immediately. So there's number one. There's number two. The report is detailed, of course. Let me see. Mm, the scholar wants you to review the Carry current on. state of I've his knowledge of the Bronze Age with you. For you in a note. I'll read it in a second. Let's hop back over to the New World, pick up that corn and bring it back. That was something we were doing at the same time. Surprisingly, there is very little corn, considering that there's a lot of tortilla makers here. That's kind of worrying. I can teach. Zero in storage. Don't tell me that ship is bugged again. No. Only are reporting in. God, where's the corn ship? There's only one as well. Oh, it's doing multiple things. Hmm. Probably don't need to do that now. I have more ships and way more influence, so this doesn't need to happen this way. Yeah, I might I might overhaul some of the just some of the trade routes out here, because we said it before that I was I was taking some shortcuts with that. Yeah, by the time that we're out, we're not going to be... I mean, it doesn't matter. We're supplying everyone with tortillas. They're not running out. I know that for a fact. A lot of time is run, but... So I guess it's fine. It's just you never like to see a building go out of production for a while. It's a bit weird. Um, but we'll just sail down, pick up some corn, and then send the ship back and be done. Uh, let's jump to... Oh, yeah, back to the New World, to our airship, pick up some gas, You've got and then go to, the new, go to the Arctic. Now, I think we only needed, I want to say 20, but it could be 40. 
Yeah, it's 40. 40 and 25. Okay. Drops are spinning. Oh, I guess that doesn't make sense. I don't need it here. I might as well bring it there in case we ever need to make another one, right? Yeah. Let's just go. I could simply go to Pretz. All right, let's see what the newspaper has for us. A bread shortage. It's funny because I said, what's the problem? Oh, yeah, it's not in rush. Okay, yeah. Some would call it misleading. <laughs> just get rid of that. Uh, basically, this island's not getting bread. I need to do that. I forgot about it. Just forgot about them. We have plenty. <laughs> I actually, in Docklands, I included the amount of bread that we want to bring in with that island in mind. I just never set up the route to deliver it, I don't think. Anyways, um, so, back to the new world. We'll get that corn. I don't know if this is what you need to do. It said something like deliver a stable supply of corn. This isn't a stable supply, but we'll just bring back 50 and see does that do anything for us. And unlock the next... Um, recipe. Alright, so back to Mbesa and continue this quest. The Builder King. Find the three of Tabaruk's works on Caduce, Tabarim, and Angareb. Monuments. We'll read the thing Can first. Obviously, us? I think one of the... We did spot one. <clears throat> uh, scholars attest that Mbesa's Bronze Age began with the unification of the land under the rule of Yetbaruk, heir of Selamawi. After the fall of the Seven and... End, and after the fall of the Seven and ended with Leban's grandson was murdered in Ingrep barely a century ago. I don't, I don't know what that means. Despite this recent history, some questions remain unanswered. The roster of works built by Yetbaruk is incomplete. He is known for his many defensive installations against the Sands kingdoms in Angareb. Oh, that's easy, I know that one. Tabarim and Gadusi, as well as the Saar walls on Wahadasha. Investigate each of these and report to me. Where is the fabled hidden access to the Temple of Gadusi Anatoni? Yet Baruch was known for building secret passages in his strongholds for fear of successful invasions. While the passage on Angareb and the mountain pass on Wahadesha are known, the passage below the temple in Caduceus remains hidden. Could you find it? Absolutely. Easy peasy. That's gotta be it. Don't tell me that's not it. Are you kidding me? That's a hidden passage that leads under the mountain. That's not it. Guess not. All right, let's find another hidden passage. So you can take this little trail. Just click that. Go up the mountain. Circle around the back. Climb your little ladder. And then you'd be at the temple. Let me read that again. The passage below the temple on Caduce Anatoni remains hidden. The passage below the temple. What? I just clicked it. That was it. Oh, that's lame. Come on. This must be Caduce Anatoni's ancient, ancient temple. Yet Baruch of the Elame, Ur Eurgent of the Holy Temple and the Protector of Caduce Anatoni, set the Holy Words into the very mountain rock. All I had to do was click the temple. I feel like that's not right. Surely you must have had to click the passage. That's the passage. We learned it in a quest. It told us about the hidden passage. You didn't have to Your take it, but we, we did take from it. Its void. It just seems a bit weird. I don't know. Maybe I'm doing something wrong, but that seems a bit strange. Just click the temple. Done. Um, World's Fair is up to its next level. So the other one was... Oops, sorry. Uh, the defensive installations against the Sands Kingdom of Angareb, Tabarim, and Caduce, as well as the Kassar, as the Sar Walls on Wahadesha. The Sar Walls? I don't think that's anything to do with it. Um, oh, this, this is the SAR down here, isn't it? Can't click anything down here, though. I could have sworn that this was what they called the SAR. Hmm. The SAR walls? Yeah, I guess not. I d don't know. I thought it was. The gate maybe might... Sar? The k -sar. Yeah, I can't click any walls in here. can't click anything in here, so I don't know. Damn, I keep opening the quest instead of the um, paper.
Investigate each of these and report back to me. Where is the fabled hidden access? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Hmm. There's no other wall. Okay, we'll get back to that one in a minute. Go to Angreb and I think it's the... Look at the uh, guns and stuff, right? The various cannons, maybe? So polished you can see your reflection. Man, this is tough or tedious or I'm just an idiot. All right, so investigate. So he is known for the many defensive installations against the Sands Kingdoms in Angareb, Tabarim, and Kadusi, as well as the Kassar walls on Wahadesha. Investigate each of these. So defensive installations against the Sands Kingdoms in Angareb, which is where we're at now. Defensive installations. So I I thought that meant the towers. I guess not. The towers are all ruined, by the way. I think they were attacked a long time by Arch. Or not Arch. Well, them. What's his name? Can't think of his name. Arthur Gasparov. The lighthouse doesn't count. We've got little guns and everything here. Do you think these would be defensive structures? Defensive structures. The walls, the crenellations would be defensive structures. No. Apparently not. I don't know. The palace itself? Dude, what the? <laughs> okay. The palace itself. So if that's the case, then over here, it must be like, just click the temple. No? The one out, out here is the one really puzzling me. So we found the one in Caduce. We found the one in Tabarim. Oh, wait, we haven't found anything on Tabarim. Maybe it's on Tabarim and not here. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Oh my god, am I a total idiot? Hang on, I think I am. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm not. Okay. I probably am, but I'm not because of the reason I was thinking of. Uh, so, yeah, defensive installations over here. Again, I'm just going to click the palace to see if that does it. That one has, like, defenses on it that we've rebuilt. The Imperial Military Academy. I mean, I probably just suck, but I gotta say, I'm not a fan of this kind of quest. Not a, not a fan of it. This vague, you gotta click the right thing thing. I don't know. I don't know what to click. Hint, look at the scholar's note. Find three of the Teboruk's works on, on these two different places. But I don't know. It could be anything. <laughs> defensive structures? I would have thought walls. See, it doesn't make any sense because it says defensive structures and yet I just clicked the temple and it worked last time. Or I clicked the fortress and it worked. So I don't know what I'd have to click here. Or even if I have to. Did I... Maybe I have to click it on Caduce? No idea. I'm sure it's probably me. I'm sorry if I'm getting frustrated. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. So this guy who builds these things... First of all, I don't even get it, right? It says here his name is Yet Barok. And then there it says find three of Tebarok. So let me... Like, are these different people? Or is it spelt wrong? Like, the roster of works built by Yet Baruch is incomplete. He's known for his many defensive installations against the Sands on these islands, as well as the Sar walls on Wahadesha. Investigate each of these and report back to me. Find the hidden entrance as well. So we did that. Did we? Yeah, I think we did. <laughs> and then it says find three of Tebarok. So the scholar has to swore in bliss. So that seems like it's just a spelling thing or something. I don't know. Very odd. Very odd. Like, I really enjoyed the Embassy quests where you look around, you see things, it's, you know, it's like, oh yeah, there's a passage or whatever. It just doesn't seem to be, to me, this doesn't seem to be adding up with what I'm reading. That's kind of my point. And then it's split across the three islands, so it's really difficult to be like, well, which one is it then? We already looked at the, the Kassar, but it didn't trigger anything. 
and it said investigate the Kassar walls, which we just looked at. I've clicked every, pretty much everything you can. The old colony, this is where the old camp was, the military camp. So I don't know. I don't know. Might have to do it next episode or something. Or just look it up, because I actually just do not know where to click now or what to do. And which island I'm supposed to be looking at. I'm lost. This is the first time I've ever got stuck on a quest in this game. Your ship has returned from its. I feel point. like I would never figure this out. I would just keep clicking until something triggers it, <laughs> which is basically what I'm doing. And clicking that doesn't do anything. Yeah, I don't know. I'm so sorry, but I'm at, I'm at a loss. I don't know. The only other one was Angareb, which I thought I clicked all the defensive structures. You know, the the guns, the towers, the crenellated walls. castle itself yep don't know out of ideas with that one sorry guys uh, anyway so this is here now we'll drop that off if we make a new airship let's do that let's head to Cape Trelawney we can progress the next world's fair stage the city is now closer to magnificence so you're gonna need a discovery that just oozes culture Another big load of steel that we have to deliver. Boat at the ready. So we got a lusk. We should have plenty on the island, and we have a ship waiting outside of it actually, just to pick some up. Um, we needed 150, so I'll just grab. I think we need a concrete as well, and I don't know if we make that there, so I'll just grab that as right here. Bring it back. Okay. Oh, we have a little bit of concrete. Anyway, they should start filling it up either way. With bricks and things. Yep, so we'll just bring them that steel. All good. Is that all our quests? Did we have any more? I'm trying to think. Oh, the corn ship. <laughs> has it made it back yet? It oh, has. The crying. Goulash always was a laborer's meal. Hardly dignified. Too rich. But the addition of corn? Someone must congratulate this Obrera. So that's for a restaurant. And now the only thing we have left is a DLC recipe. So Strogoff Goulash. Jump to the recipe. A benefit of an increasingly globalized world is the joy of fusion. Take East Bohemian Goulash, already a beloved dish among the artisans, and re regard how humble Senorita Maldonado elevated it with mere with the mere addition of new world corn so it's just that's yeah it's just goulash but with extra corn that's literally it anger, <laughs> but surely there are better ways to fight back than murder and plunder hmm, that's an interesting little voice line um so the next one then we've got one recipe to go and then our empire tower i think is done for its recipes as well That'd be crazy. I can't believe we've got them all. I thought it would take quite a while to kind of get them all. I guess they're not too difficult. Literally just deliver some corn, you know? It's not that bad. <laughs> um, actually, just while I'm here, I'm just going to pick up some steel and ship this off to Cape Trelawney as well, because it needs it. All right. I think that might have to be it for this episode. Um, pretty. S actually, yeah, I can't remember. My clock says... We're way over an hour, but I think I left it recording at the beginning for a bit of time. Maybe I'll just go a few more minutes then and see. Um, I guess while I'm waiting, I'll try more of that quest. I'm so sorry that I don't know what I'm doing. Actually, just really quickly, let's check global population stats as well, because I'm kind of curious to see where we leveled out now. That's nice. So the engineers have picked up to nearly, yeah, to basically where they were at before. Yeah, they're at but just under 15,000 before, so that's, that's basically where they're at now. And investors should be higher than ever. Um, workers is okay. Everything's pretty much okay. Seems pretty even. Tourists are up to nearly 5,000. They're five short of 5,000. And then everything else is a bit divided. But yeah, pretty good. So basically, we only need, um, I don't know, two to 3,000 more. So we'll throw down some... Not only can we get more engineers, but of course we can build out on some of the other islands that we have. Uh, especially this one, there's a lot of blank space on it. There's some things I want to put here. I was thinking of changing the fertility to actually add fur, and then we could have two fur islands. 
I, people have been saying, why don't you go to the Arctic to get fur? Fur is great in the Arctic. It's true. The Arctic's really hard to make things, like, supply, like last. <laughs> At least for me. Oh, yeah, I meant to say. Pop them on that. And then we can turn off I this. I find the safety goggles a bit stopped mid flow Yeah, so basically to build airships, I stop making, um... I stop uh, producing gold ore. Uh, and then this needs to turn on as well. And there you go. They should be operational now. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I mean, you could do it. Obviously, I can do. You can do anything, <laughs> especially with guides and lookup stuff. Anything really is possible. It's fine. But it is. A, it is a challenge. You know, I don't have much of a workforce. We do have a lot of a workforce here that we don't actually use. It's just space. I suppose what I could do if I wanted to get fur instead of making coal here. I could just get rid of a lot of these charcoal kilns, try to rely purely on coal that comes in from other islands, like the old world and stuff, and then just build out fur cabins and see how it goes. So fur here, every 15 seconds you make one. God, that lagged quite a lot. Every 15 seconds you make one. That is pretty good. Oh. Oh. You can overlap it. This is at 100% cultivation area, and it still is, even if I put this down. Is that true? Our tools are frozen solid. Ah, but these need heat, whereas that doesn't. Okay, that's a bit different. It's pretty generous. Actually, yeah. How far does that pipe go? It only goes to there. I mean, 94 and 95 is not that bad, right? bit of free space out here. We'll just send the road that way. It saves a bit. So the cultivation area is 99. This one is 100. And that's How heated. Thrilling. This one is... Yeah, so that's a lot of fur. Arrive. I wonder... Um, I could just set up a, uh, its own route right now. We've got loads of ships, so... I don't mind setting up a designated route just for that as well. Or, actually, we never carry back that much gold ore. So I guess... Oh, we do pick it up on the thing. Yeah, okay. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to have to rework some trade routes again, haven't I? There was something else I was considering bringing back, and I just can't quite remember what it was. And I remember saying, like, oh, I'd, oh, it was the, um, it was the whale oil. That's what it is. Delicacies. Yeah, so I have this ship doing it. You know what? Yeah, why not? Just leave this ship as is, and we'll just take some of that fur back with us as well. Why not? I mean, I'll probably just make this a cargo ship at some point. Uh, but seeing as I have a ship coming to and from the same island anyway, and still going back there, it delivers it to Sword. So ultimately, you don't want to do that. You want to deliver it to uh, Lusk, is where we use it. We're only loading up 100. See, so yeah, let's um, change that to 150. So by the time they get up here, I'm sure that'll be good. And then flies back up. So let's see where that ship is right now. It should be on its way back up. Yeah, it's on its way back up to the Arctic now. So that's cool. Yeah, so that's, that's actually quite helpful. I mean, with a bit more time and, atten and care and attention, obviously, yeah, one every 15 seconds. That's pretty good. I think it's something like a minute 30 or something in the old world. We'll check it in a moment. But considering I do have a lot of explorers and that it's actually quite forgiving in terms of overlap, uh, I can certainly look to add it into places like the next to the bear cabins as well. Yeah, these need to be heated, so... No reason not to have it on both. I didn't realize that. I thought, that's why I was saying I, I didn't want to do it. I was like, I don't have the space. But if you can just group them up like that, it's pretty good. Yeah, we have the workforce, so why the hell not? Uh, so basically, now if we head Your back to... Your ship has returned from its voyage. Back to the old world. I'll just check really quickly. What is the fur rate? We put our love into this. So it's a minute. So basically, fur is four times as good in the Arctic. 
Yeah, that's quite interesting, and that will make a big difference, I think. Uh, people said, I hope you don't ever get rid of the fur here. I, I don't plan on it. When I redesigned this island to look a bit nicer, it's just keeping everything that's here. It's just moving things to make it look good. Oops. Uh, wrong island. Sorry, my bad. I want to go to Cape Trelawney. There we go. It said our ship returned from its voyage. There's a ship here. It just has to turn the corner. New orders. And this one was here to pick up some steel again. Yeah. Room to maneuver. All right, cool. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna wait for that uh, ship at Cape Trelawney. Jump, uh, drop off its stuff, and then the next goal is to be getting this built, or starting its build, I guess. So it needs a little bit more concrete, it needs more steel and some extra bricks, which we're making here. The concrete and steel, I don't think we make here, or if we do, it's in low quantities. I don't have all I need for my canvas. Yeah, they're out of fur. But that fur comes from Lusk, so the fact that we're dropping it off there, that should knock on effect, should fix things. Only our reporting in. Big engineer workforce here as well. All right, let's drop it off. Bring her around. And uh, yeah, we can unpause we these things now. Great. So our farmer workforce is back to work. We had a huge excess of workers, so they can just work this no problem. Pretty much. And it's just loading up all the steel and dropping it in there now. And yeah, I don't really know where I'm going to put that. Again, this another I could have done the same thing I did in, in the old city. I built the, in, uh, the World's Fair up here. That would have been funny. It's always built on some giant plateau. I guess you could even maybe fit it up there. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, Alright, well I think that's going to be it for this episode. It's a bit of a weird one with that quest just being hanging there. I, I Maybe I'll just go between episodes and look at what to do. And sorry that I'm an idiot, but like I said, I'm heavily sleep deprived right now. Maybe that's part of it. But um, yeah, I don't know why. I just can't quite work out what, like, why does it say different names? It says four different islands. I thought we found the mountain pass, but then I guess I didn't. I I don't I don't know. I don't think I found the mountain pass. I think what's happened is I clicked the temple here. On Caduceus and Tony, and that counts as one of the for structures that was built. I'm assuming, whereas the passage probably is that passage, but we don't get that option until we progress this bit. I'm assuming that's what's happened. So, it's still I'm still confused though as to where to look for what I'm like. What am I missing? Like check the Kassar area. That didn't seem to do anything. I checked the Kassar itself. Just didn't do anything. Uh, I checked Tabarim. I thought I looked everywhere. Maybe I'm missing something kind of... Maybe, I don't know. Oh, maybe maybe out there. Oh no, my game is like freezing. My game is totally froze. Ugh, God damn it. Please, please be okay. This is, uh, again, kind of part of the reason that um, episodes are erratic. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching, and remember, if you want to support this series directly, you can click the Join button to become a channel member. Doing so will get your name in the credits, as well as loyalty badges and emotes to use in the comments. If you don't see the Join button, it means the video has been copyright claimed, but you can still join from the channel page on desktop. You can also link your account to our Discord to get a special role on there that will give you access to the Senate House and a few other perks.